a warm welcome to Euro Wizard, a magical sleep saga inspired by the world of Harry Potter, where you are the main character. As you take a moment to get comfortable, remind yourself that this is your story, and there are no limits to what you can add to this adventure. Anyone that you meet along the way throughout this saga can be whoever you want them to be. They might be people from your own life, a famous figure that you admire, or a character from the books. So be sure to bring along your own unique imagination. Let your thoughts turn to those of magic, wonder, and adventure as we continue our Harry Potter sleep saga. You wake up in an unfamiliar but very comfortable four-poster bed. The sound of a crackling fire soothes your morning fatigue. The soft pillow and thick duvet have an enchanting warmth, one that makes you want to stay in bed forever. The entire room is framed on a very slight angle, with crooked walls and an uneven floor. On your left, a thin blue curtain is parted ever so slightly, and on the wood-panelled wall opposite, there is a long slit of light with beads of dust dancing in the golden glow. The white plaster ceiling above you is full of hairline cracks, and as you rest here, tracing the jagged lines above you, you begin to remember the magical day you had only yesterday, and you start to piece together the puzzle. You recall how a mysterious letter was delivered by an owl, and as you opened it, the letter transported you to a dark passageway in the heart of London, where you were guided by a beautiful black and white cat. Finally, you emerged through an enchanted door into a magical alley full of witches and wizards just like you. You delved into the tunnels of the Great Goblin Bank and found your new wizarding money inside a hidden vault deep underground. Waiting for you outside the bank was your best friend, who had also received a letter and who will join you on this magical adventure. Together, you collected your robes and uniforms, purchased your books and potions equipment, and finally received the most precious gift of all, your magic wand. You recall being lost in the alley last night, but your trusty companion, the black and white cat, brought you here to this magical tavern for a warm wizard's supper and a soft bed for a perfect night's sleep. And now, today, you will board the enchanted train and journey to a beautiful, wondrous castle hidden from the non-magical world, ready to begin your training. With a flutter in your heart, Thinking of the day ahead, you climb out of bed 
and walk over to your many cases stacked neatly against the far wall. On top of your cases sits a wonderful enchanted animal fast asleep in their cage. A gift given to you by your best friend. You take a moment to open the cage and give them a good morning tickle under their chin. They sleepily sniff your hand and curl up once again, desperate for just a few minutes more. You open a brown paper shopping bag and take out your uniform and your robe. An unstoppable excitement is bubbling in your stomach now. And before you know it, you are pulling on your new uniform as quickly as you can. You take a moment to look at yourself in the crooked, dusty mirror hanging on the wall. You are fully robed, looking wonderfully smart and ready for your adventure into magic. Perched on a table to your right is a small rectangular box. Your eyes are drawn to it and to the enchanting pulse it gives off. You take the box in your hand, slip off the lid and fold back a thin piece of silk. With a deep breath, you gently remove your wand and hold it tight in your hand. Suddenly, it all makes sense. This wand is the final piece of the puzzle, the one thing that makes all of this real. Only those who hold magic within them are destined to carry one of these. And this wand is yours. It chose you. Just then, there is a knock at your bedroom door. You have a funny feeling who it might be, and you open it with an eager smile. Standing in front of you, also fully robed, is your best friend. They greet you with an excited chuckle and an impatient shuffle in their feet. One hand carries their animal in their cage and the other holds their wand. They lift up the wand in front of their face, showing it off to you with a wide smile before slipping it back into their pocket. As you turn and collect your animal, you whisper to them that it is time for breakfast. Instantly, their eyes pop open and look around excitedly. You cannot help but laugh at their innocence and empathize with their morning hunger. You close the door behind you and your friend leads the way down the crooked wooden stairs, slowly revealing the now familiar tavern from last night. The delicious smell of a hot breakfast circles the room and a delicate steam drifts above the trestle tables. A large stone fire pit crackles away in the middle of the tavern, keeping the whole room at a perfect warmth. Oil lanterns and floating candles are dotted around the tavern. A carved and crooked oak chandelier sways gently over the room, and soft yellow lights give off a comforting golden glow. There are many drowsy witches and wizards 
enjoying a hearty breakfast and fresh morning coffee. But the atmosphere is subdued, quiet and calm. One or two chairs are unstacking themselves from atop the tables. They turn themselves upright and slot perfectly into place without the help of a single human hand. Perched in the corner is a pink-haired witch with a newspaper floating in front of her. The pages turn independently and the picture on the front moves like a short video on repeat. Her coffee stirs by itself as she reads the daily news of this magical world. After waiting patiently at the bottom of the steps, the friendly barman greets you. You remember his grubby nose from last night, and you wonder if the poor fellow ever gets a day off. You and your friend each pay a sickle, and with a warm smile he guides you to a low wooden table, advising you he will be right back before dashing off into his kitchen, a small red and white towel over his shoulder. At that moment, a white cloth and metal bucket float over to you and begin to wipe down the table without spilling a single drop of water. The precision and detail of their work is remarkable. The cloth wrings itself out over the bucket and wipes down the table again, this time drying it off. As you rest your arms on the wood, it is clean, fresh and warm to the touch. You cannot help but think just how wonderful magic really is. The barman returns now with two copper coffee pots and places them down on the table. Inside, he tells you, is their famous wizard's brew, a recipe crafted by the very first owner of this tavern and has been passed on for generations. The wizard's brew takes the taste of whatever drink you are craving the most, and if you wish, you can even change flavors halfway through. In that moment, two small plates float over to your table, topped with a hot, steaming pastry, freshly baked. This, the barman tells you, is another delicacy of the tavern, one of his own inventions. One small pastry can fill the stomach for hours, giving off a comfortable warmth that runs through your body for the entire day. From behind his back now, the barman reveals two small metal bowls full of multicolored dried food. The perfect breakfast, he says, for your magical animals. You and your friend take your companions from their cage and place them next to you on your bench, the silver bowls in front of them. With a wiggle of excitement, they tuck in and begin to enjoy their enchanted breakfast. The pot of wizard's brew rises from the table and pours into a small cup in front of you. The rich, hot, golden liquid falls almost in slow motion and a thin steam lifts from the rim. 
As the brew begins to whirlpool in your cup, you take your first sip. In that moment, you taste the drink you are most craving for, and instantly a beautiful, tingling sensation begins to pulse from the top of your head, through your body, and all the way to the tips of your fingers and your toes. With a few bites of this delicious pastry, there is a new warmth in your stomach. It is like a mini fire with the embers glowing steadily, providing a wonderful heat that will fuel you for the whole day. Your friend gives you a smile and you share your thoughts for the journey ahead and the feeling of finally arriving at the castle tonight. Just then, you feel a soft brushing against your leg, but when you look under the table, nothing is there. Suddenly, you hear your friend laughing above you, and as you lift your head back up, you are met by the delicate face of your old companion, the black and white cat, looking into your eyes with a knowing mischief. Your furry friend has come to see you off today and make sure that you get on your way safely. With a full heart, you give them a gentle stroke on their head as they settle on your lap and curl up in a perfect circle, purring softly. You get the impression that they would love to come with you, but you know that their duty is here, for they are one of the many guardians of this magical alley. Still, you know that whenever you want to come back to this place, they will always be here, waiting for your return. You take a moment to enjoy this beautiful atmosphere, the sound of your purring companion, your happy and hungry animal devouring their breakfast, and your very best friend sitting opposite you. As you finish your pastry and the last drop of your wizard's brew, the barman approaches and in a whisper asks you to follow him, for he has something to show the both of you. The black and white cat sits up and leads the way behind the barman. You feel a new comfort and confidence with this cat guiding you once again. And you know undoubtedly that you have made a friend for life. The barman leads you down a hidden grey corridor, peppered with dim torchlight. The corridor turns a sharp right, then left left again, and then right. You walk straight now at a steady pace, but before the end of the next corridor, the barman stops, turning to face a single red brick on your left. He pushes the brick slowly into the wall. Then, the bricks begin to fold apart and create a small art doorway. A blue light pulses from the entrance and a wonderful magic radiates from inside the room. 
one by one, you walk through the door into a small wooden room. Huge white blankets cover old chairs and bits of furniture. There are broken tables, chandeliers, and old used tankards scattered around the room. Opposite you, looking very out of place in this crooked, dusty room, is a pure white marble fireplace. But there is no fire burning. Instead, the floor of the fireplace glows in a dark blue and pulses with light. Much of the light, however, is blocked by a large silhouette. A shadow in the shape of a huge man. As the shadow steps to one side, the light reveals his face, and you see it is not a man at all, but a giant. A giant easily ten feet tall, with the bushiest, blackest beard you ever saw, and shaggy black hair down to his shoulders. He wears a thick brown coat and heavy boots with brass buckles. For a giant, he has the friendliest face you have ever seen. An inexplicable warmth radiates from him, one that makes you feel calm and safe. He lets out a low chuckle and gently picks up the black and white cat, who curls up in his arms, giving off a rich, satisfied purr. With the cat in one arm, this gentle giant holds out his other hand, introducing himself. He is the gamekeeper, he tells you, and professor of magical creatures. He has been sent by the headmaster to provide you with safe passage to King's Cross. His enormous palm and fingers wrap around both your hand and your friends, and as he shakes, you feel yourself almost being lifted from the ground. Your smile fades to confusion for a moment and you ask the giant why you had to be brought all this way to an old hidden room just to meet him. With a twinkle in his eye, he tells you that this is no ordinary room. In here there is a secret portal, a gateway that will take you directly to King's Cross Station, and he points a large finger at the white marble fireplace. At that moment, the barman takes out a small green pouch tied up with string. Flu powder, he tells you, a magical means of transportation. Your best friend turns to you excitedly, reminding you that only yesterday they used flu powder to travel here. They assure you that it is perfectly safe, and in fact, very fun. All you have to do, the giant explains, is take a pinch of powder in your hand, step into the fireplace, and speak the name of your destination as you throw down the powder. Then, as if to bid you farewell, the black and white cat leaps from the giant's arms and runs over to you, circling your legs and brushing against you. Suddenly, they roll onto their back, demanding a belly rub. You kneel down and gently stroke their tummy as they continue to purr. You will be back soon, you tell them and you can't wait to see them again. 
they brush their head against your hand and offer one or two affectionate licks. And as you stand up, your furry companion leaps up onto a stool next to you, patiently waiting to see you off. Your friend stops for a moment, reminding the barman that all your luggage is still in your room. With a knowing smile, he whips off one of the white blankets to reveal both of your trolleys, perfectly packed with all of your bags, ready to go. You walk over to your luggage and place your animal cage on the very top. Their eyes roam around this enchanting room with a curious glow. Your best friend offers to go first so you can see how it works. The giant tells you he will follow up behind the both of you, bringing your luggage with him. The barman opens the pouch and you watch your best friend pull out a small fist of powder. They step into the large fireplace the dark blue light illuminating their smile. Then they speak the words King's Cross Station and they throw down the powder. Instantly the blue light erupts into a rich green, covering your friend and filling the room with an emerald shimmer. As the light slowly turns back to blue and fades once again, you see the fireplace is empty. Your friend awaits you now at King's Cross. The giant places a reassuring hand on your shoulder, but you are not nervous anymore. You are filled with wonder and excitement. You walk up to the barman, taking a fistful of powder from the pouch. It is the texture of damp sand, clumpy and cold, but soft to the touch. You step into the bubbling blue fireplace, your heart beating in anticipation. You take a deep breath, and with one last look at your new friends, you speak the words, King's Cross Station, and throw down the powder. Suddenly, you are engulfed in an emerald green light, and you feel a pulsing sensation throughout your body, a rippling vibration There is the sensation of floating through the air, and you feel the warmth of the sun beaming over your face. It's as if you are sitting atop a cloud, floating through a magical sky, backed by an emerald sunrise. You can feel yourself passing through different places now, and occasional images flash by. You see the big red London buses, the black taxis, and Millennium Bridge. You pass over Leicester Square, Big Ben, and the London Eye. And just then, a soft white light begins to lift over your eyes. Your feet land on a hard concrete floor, and slowly the world comes into focus again.
your eyes and ears awaken to the sight and sound of a busy train station. The hustle and bustle of ordinary life ticks away and the muffled tannoy echoes across the station. Your best friend stands in front of you and you share an unstoppable grin. You step out into King's Cross Station. You can hardly believe it. Behind you is a small alcove of white brick and you watch the last light of emerald disappear into the floor. In the next moment, you see the alcove expand in size, bigger and bigger, until at last the giant appears. You see the bushy beard first, followed by his huge shoulders and enormous feet. He steps out of the emerald light, pushing two trolleys, with two very flustered animals perched on top. You check around to see if anyone has noticed, but the muggle world continues on, unaware and oblivious. Unlike you, they are blind to the magic. Your friendly giant points a huge finger down the station toward platforms 9 and 10 and you follow behind his heavy footsteps through the now busy station. There is something warm and comforting about the giant's presence. He is uncommonly kind and you feel safe and protected with him guiding your way. He turns to give you a cheeky smile with an excited twinkle in his eye. He carries a large umbrella and uses it now almost as a walking stick. Many of the muggles have noticed the giant now and very carefully navigate around him at a distance. They give a confused, jaw-dropping stare, and he responds by mimicking their silly expressions right back at them. You cannot help but laugh at this gentle giant. The station is formed of tall archways of grey brick, with blue and white metal signs at each platform. The walls tower high up to the ceiling and the early morning sun reflects on the glass domed roof. The buzz of rush hour whizzes through the air with restless passengers fidgeting on the platform as many trains are pulling into the station. It is incredible to think that all these ordinary folk are completely unaware of the beautiful, boundless magic that you have in your life. You arrive at a thick brick archway, planted firmly between platforms 9 and 10. The gentle giant stops and turns to you. This is it, he says. Another magical gateway, only this one takes you directly to the enchanted platform of nine and three quarters, where you will find the magical express waiting for you. He pulls out a silver pocket watch and flicks it open. You have plenty of time yet before the train leaves, he reassures you. Plenty of time. Then, suddenly, he gasps, asking if you have your tickets. In perfect timing, 
you and your friend both remove the paper tickets from your pocket, holding them up with a proud smile. The gentle giant chuckles to himself with a sigh of relief, admitting sheepishly that he can be a bit of a worrier. To pass through this gateway, he adds, all you have to do is run at the pillar between nine and ten. To your disappointment, the giant tells you he won't be coming with you on the train. He has business to attend to at the school. But rest assured, he will be seeing you later this evening. He rummages in the bag over his shoulder and produces two hardback books and hands one to each of you. The History of Magic. These should give you a bit of a head start, he adds with a mischievous wink. You cannot resist the urge to throw yourself at the giant into a huge, warm embrace. He lifts both of you into the air with a chuckle and places you gently back down again. Be off now, he adds with a loving tear in his eye and a quiet sniff. He hates goodbyes, he tells you, but you promise to see him soon, and he nods affectionately. You place your new book inside your top case, and stand facing the pillar. You are ready. You hold your trolley with confidence, and with a bubbling excitement, you run straight towards the brick archway. Suddenly, a darkness washes over you, and the sounds of King's Cross begin to fade. You feel a tingling sensation running through your body, from the top of your head to the very tips of your toes. The darkness morphs into white and gold, and a pulsing pale light forms around you. It begins to fade slowly as your eyes adjust once more, revealing a magical train station, packed full of witches and wizards, and hidden from the muggle world. The station is arched with cream-coloured brick in smooth formation and peppered with a silver stardust that floats through the air. And there, through a thin mist, you see it. A black-fronted steam engine coupled with a deep crimson and contoured with glistening gold. Behind the engine, a perfect line of crimson and gold carriages continue deep into the tunnel beyond. The chimney puffs out steam of marshmallow white, as thick as a spring cloud. It covers the wheels of the train, giving the impression that this majestic engine is floating above the ground. On the front of the engine is a red sign, arched ever so slightly, decorated with gold writing. The Hogwarts Express. You have dreamt of this day for as long as you remember, and now you are finally coming home. With a tap on your shoulder, you turn to see your best friend's smiling face, a happy tear in their eye. 
you put your arms around one another and savor this beautiful moment.